Hello and welcome to our presentation. Today I'm going to talk about resonant control for induction heating circuits. For a general overview of what an induction heater is, is that you have a three-phase input, you rectify it in a DC, and then you invert that DC back into AC again at a higher frequency than a line frequency. And you want to have this circuit in resonance because you get the maximum power transfer to your uh, workpiece. For this project, I'm just going to be simulating the RLC circuit when the with the transformer acting as a voltage source. And my motivation behind this project is that I made an induction furnace for my undergraduate degree and it has a manual con frequency control, so uh, you'd have to keep adjusting the frequency to keep it in resonance. While I'm going to make a, a nonlinear control that automatically keeps it in resonance, so you don't have to worry about adjusting the frequency. This slide is about um, heating reflection. So if you insert a workpiece, Inside of the inductor, it will reflect impedance back across the transformer. And this transformer is just like a virtual uh, between the coil of the work coil and then the workpiece. So if you insert a workpiece inside the work coil, you're going to get an extra inductor and extra resistor in circuit. So we have a variable, I've just lumped all these, everything together into one lump parameter model, which the inductor varies and the resistance varies based on the work PC button, the work coil. For the state equations, we've seen them before in class. X1 is the current through the inductor and X2 is the voltage across the capacitor. Hamiltonian and the power through the work coil of just, it's just R, I squared R. For this project, I've made a, a work coil out of seven turns of uh, two millimeter copper diameter wire. And I've ran it, tested an LCR meter to measure the duct incident resistance of the work coil. So with an air core, you're looking at a one microhenry series inductance and for the resistance about 10, 10 milli ohms. When you put a workpiece inside of the work coil you're getting a 1.5 microhenry parameter and a 12.7 milli, milli ohm series resistance so it actually adds to this. And for the workpiece I used the M10 bolt a bunch of M10 washers and just kind of linked them all together so it'd be like a steel material you'd be melting. And this is just representative of uh, a water-cooled, um, a much higher power coil that you, you can put a lot more watts through than this. This one at least have that much power dissipation. Talk about resonance really quick. If you're uh, reacting to the capacitor and reacting to the inductor equal each other, you're going to get this resonance point right here. And if you're operating below the resonance, this the circuit's going to act capacitively. And then if you're active, if you're above the resonance, it's going to be more inductive behavior. And this is like the textbook example of a natural resonant frequency, which is this line right here on this chart, which is the transmittance over the applied frequency, the ratio of applied frequency to the, to the undamped natural frequency. You can see as the damping ratio is increased, your resonance fre resonant frequency, which I define as like the peak, of the transmissibility curve, it gets offset from the undamped uh, natural resonance frequency. 
and the th with my project, it is about 1% difference. And I've calculated that with this equation. And you can also see with looking at the eigenvalues of the circuit that you have a damping term plus the complex part, which also includes the resistance of the circuit. Now into describing function analysis. For my nonlinear control, I've used a relay, a simple relay with no hysteresis. And the input is the current, which is x1. If the current is positive, it's going to output 1 volt. The current is negative, it's going to be negative 1 volt. So this is, a, this is a positive feedback system, which is different than what was in the book. For the assumptions, um, it meets all assumptions. For the low pass characteristic, uh, there's a bit of discussion on that. If you're above the resonant frequency, it's going to exhibit low pass characteristics. But if you're at or below the resonant frequency, it's actually going to be not not that. Uh, but I've proceeded anyway with, with describing function analysis, uh, since the book says that it might might or it might or might not work. So I've just um, continued on, and I've also seen a paper that also says that if it's since it's low pass, if it's above the resonance frequency, um, the describing function analysis can um, continue. So this is just the function that I found um, just out of the book, um, the Fourier series. Since this is an odd function, uh, this Fourier series expansion, your the a, a coefficient is zero, and you're just left with a b coefficient. So doing that, you just end up with a simply pretty simple formula. And now onto the Nye cost analysis. Uh, since this is a positive feedback system, uh, your transfer function is going to be looking like that. Instead of a negative one being the point that causes instability when you encircle it, it's actually positive one in this instance because it's a positive feedback system, which is right approximately there <laughs> on this Nyquist plot. And this Nyquist plot shows that if you're underneath the resonance, that's going to be capacitive which is causes the positive complex part. And when you're over it, it's inductive, which is a negative uh, complex part. And at this at this point, it's actually at the resonant point because it reaches, it's at the, the complex part is zero in this instance. And I've calculated the intersection point, which is, I've calculated the A at 120 amps and a frequency of 30,000 uh, radians per second, which is around 4.9 kilohertz. For the limits, I did a, to confirm that the Nyquist analysis does create a limit cycle at this point. I've done a nonlinear simulation on this uh, RLC circuit, and you can see going from starting at 0, 0 or 200 amps and 0 volts that it, it, uh, tends to go to this circular point right there. So I've confirmed that the limit, there is a limit cycle in this circuit, and that is a, it's a stable limit cycle because uh, both these get uh, moved to the line. So, And then this, this green is like the switching line where um, the controller switches the relay on and off. Now I did a simulation on the varying, when I, if I would vary the resistance and inductance by inserting the workpiece in the work coil. Uh, just at startup, you can see that the controller is uh, achieving zero current switching, which is right, right there, it's switching right at the zero of the current, so it's uh, important for high power circuits to um, reduce power losses, things like that. 
And these two graphs are when the when the work crease is inserted. So you can see that the frequency decreases in this example and also the, the current decreases as well. Uh, the voltage doesn't increase that much. Uh, looking at the Hamiltonian, you can see that it's pretty flat on top, meaning that it's at a very good resonant point. Calculating uh, cycle by cycle frequency from the simulation, you can see that it matches the damped uh, natural slash resonant frequency that I calculated earlier. Uh, before and even after the workpiece is inserted. And you can see the power actually decreases after the workpiece is inserted in this uh, simulation. So, And the, the nonlinear controller found the point of resonance, which is 4.85 kilohertz, uh, before the uh, workpiece is inserted which was calculated um, previously. So it, it found the resonant point, which is, it also corresponds to the, the eigenfrequency, which using this equation, this would, this would equal the resonant point in radians per second, then you divide it by two pi, and then you get the actual resonant point. So it's very well into resonance. It's the, the most resonance it can get. So this, this uh, controller is working really good. And compared to the Nyquist analysis, the simulated frequency is 1.2% lower than what the Nyquist um, estimated it to be. So that's a pretty good result. Comparing this to the PLL controller, um, then the downside of PLL controllers is that you're going to get a time to resonance based on your initial condition. For my controller that I simulated, it was around 0.38 seconds, which is the one right there, and the, to get within one percent of the resonant point, instead of having the resonance almost like right at the start of the controller. So it's a, a superior controller to a PLL controller. Um, the downsides of this controller is that you're going to get some noise on the current waveform based coming from your current shunt or your actual sensor. There's going to be some noise on it. So you're going to, if you don't have any uh, hysteresis, you're going to have uh, probably a bunch of switching happening um, at every uh, zero crossing. So you need to have some sort of like minimum minimum frequency or minimum um, hysteresis kind of area so it doesn't switch a bunch of times. But other than that, it uh, doesn't have to uh, come into resonance and lock into resonance like a PLL controller does. So I would say it's superior just in that case. So I hope you like the presentation. Um, well, the future work would be to have a power control because I've noticed that the, the resonant point or putting a workpiece in the work coil reduces the power output. So you'd want to increase the voltage up to either equal or exceed the initial power. Ideally, you'd want power to be low coming in, and then once you put the workpiece in, it'll shoot up to whatever your operating point is to save on power. So that'd be a different um, controller you'd hack onto this um, other controller. But for this project, I just focused on the resonant point of for the circuit. And here are my references. I hope you found this uh, presentation um, informative, and you can keep and you can uh, give your comments down below on any questions that you have. So.